Welcome to Everyday Linux User. This is a review of Linux Mint 21, Cinnamon Edition. Linux Mint is a modern and stylish operating system and is a more than adequate alternative to Microsoft Windows. Boasting a sleek interface and pleasing to the eye desktop, the first screen you will see consists of a single panel with menu, quick launch icons and a system tray. You will also see a welcome screen. To connect to the internet, click on the network manager icon and choose the wireless network you wish to connect to. Enter a password if required. The welcome screen includes a section called First Steps, it is useful to work through them to set your system up as required. For instance, you can change the coloring of the desktop and windows. As well as choosing coloring you can choose dark or light mode, you can also change the panel style to have a classic look or to have a more modern feel. It is a good idea to create backups of your operating system, Linux Mint provides an application called TimeShift to enable you to do this. You can choose the backup method, either rsync or btrfs, TimeShift will then estimate the system size, this can take a few minutes. You can now choose a storage device for the backup. You can also choose how frequently backups should be made. As well as core operating system files, you can also choose to backup your home directory. Another useful first step is to install proprietary hardware drivers for graphics, audio and network cards. Multimedia codecs can be installed as part of the installation, but if you forgot to do this then you can click on the button in the first step screen, multimedia codecs provide access to proprietary video and audio files as well as common fonts. Linux Mint provides a large number of settings that you can tweak to make your computer work the way you want it to. There are 11 stock images that you can use as your background image. In addition to these, there are 22 further images under the Vanessa folder. You can also use any of your own images as the background. You can choose to rotate the images as a slideshow and you can determine how often the images change. The images can also be chosen at random. You can change the way the desktop and windows behave by adding different effects to them. In order to improve performance you may consider turning some of these off. You can also change the sizes of the fonts and styles of fonts within application windows. There are a number of downloadable desktop themes available. These allow you to change the way icons, applications, the mouse pointer and desktop look and feel. If you need to change the size of the text on the screen or you need an on-screen keyboard then you can use the accessibility settings screen to set these accordingly. The accessibility options provide visual aids, keyboard, typing and mouse assistance. The account details screen lets you change the username or password and assign an image for the user. Applets are useful tools that can be added to the system tray. There are a number of applets to try, such as the Recycle Bin. The most useful applet shows the available workspaces. As well as the default stock applets, there are a number available to download as well. If your clock is showing an incorrect time, or you are traveling abroad, you can adjust the time zone using the date and time settings. As well as adding applets to the system tray, you can also add desklets to your desktop. There are a number of default desklets available, as well as a selection of downloadable ones. The Cinnamon desktop is incredibly customizable. You can even choose which icons are available by default on your desktop, such as the computer, home, rubbish bin, mounted and network drives. 
there are a number of extensions that can be downloaded and added to your desktop. These are largely cosmetic, such as the rotating cube for showing different workspaces, or the incredibly annoying wobbly windows. If you find that Cinnamon is taking too much memory then you can set a memory limit and the desktop will restart as soon as the limit is reached. You can also enable logging out or shutting down timers. You can make the corners of the screen interactive by setting hot corners. For instance in this example, I have set the top left corner so that it will show all of my available workspaces. If you need to insert characters that aren't on your keyboard such as Chinese or Japanese characters, then you can add them via the input method screen. You can also change the languages that are available on your system via the languages screen. By default, notifications appear in the top right corner. You can adjust these so that they appear in the bottom right corner by changing the settings in the notification screen. Linux Mint can be linked to online accounts such as Google. By linking accounts, you can have for instance, calendar events from your Google account appear in the Linux Mint calendar. By default, Linux Mint has a single panel at the bottom of the screen. You can adjust the behavior of this panel. For instance, you can auto-hide the panel so that it only appears when you hover the mouse towards the bottom of the screen. You can also set it to intelligently hide so that it only disappears when you place a window over it. The panel size can also be made smaller or larger. More panels can be added to the screen. You can choose to place a panel at the top or bottom or either side. You can add different applets to each panel. You can set the preferred application for each file type. For example by default the web browser is Firefox. If you decided to install Google Chrome then you can make that the default browser via the preferred application screen. By default, the most recently accessed files are remembered and shown whenever you click on the recent files list within the Linux Mint menu. You can choose whether to show recently accessed files or indeed how long to show files for, by amending the privacy settings. A screensaver appears by default after 15 minutes. You can amend this behavior within the screensaver settings screen. There are a number of applications that start every time you boot into Linux. The startup application screen lets you turn off some of the applications you don't need to run, such as the welcome screen. You can adjust the way windows appear and behave. For instance you can choose the positioning of the buttons to be on the left, or right, or even go for a Mac appearance. You can also adjust how the window reacts when you click on the title bar. By default, when you drag a window to the top of the screen it tiles. You can adjust this behavior so that the window becomes full screen. Finally, you can also adjust the way workspaces appear. For instance, you can make them appear as a grid or horizontally as shown here. Linux Mint provides a firewall, which can be set up for basic use, by clicking a single button. The system tray can be used to interact with a number of important device features such as audio settings, network settings, Bluetooth and printers. There is also a clock, which is much more than just a clock, as when you click on it you can see a calendar and from that calendar you can see upcoming events that you have set using the calendar application. The performance of Linux Mint is generally very good, even on a low-budget PC. You will also notice that you don't need to use a terminal window to use Linux Mint. It is advisable to keep your system up to date and this is listed as one of the options in the first steps. A list of updates will appear and all you have to do is click install. Unlike Windows, you will not be forced to wait for the updates to install. You may be required to reboot after the updates have finished but you can do so when it is convenient for you. It is worth noting that when this system was updated previously it caused the system to enter a kernel panic the next time the computer rebooted. The system had to be reinstalled to make Linux Mint work again. This only happened on one occasion. Linux Mint comes with a decent set of core applications installed by default. 
Under the Accessories menu, you will see tools such as Archive Manager for handling zip files, the Calendar tool, a disk management tool, a tool for making notes, an image viewer, a text editor and a USB formatter and USB image writer. You will note as we move along that there are a number of tools that achieve the same aim, for instance here is the image viewer which allows you to view photos and images stored on your computer. There are other similar tools installed under the graphics menu. The notes tool provides yellow stickies that you can place on your desktop as reminders. Under the graphics menu there are three programs, Document Scanner, Drawing and Pix. Drawing is very much akin to Paintbrush within Microsoft Windows whereas Pix is a more fully featured photo viewer than the image viewer seen in the accessories menu. The default web browser in Linux Mint is Firefox. There are other browsers available via the software manager which you will be shown later on. As you can see I am browsing to the Everyday Linux user YouTube page. This is a good time to remind you to hit that subscribe button and, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. A long long time ago, in a galaxy not too far away. In a time before Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter and Reddit. The way people used to do instant messaging was via IRC, Linux Mint provides HexChat, which is an IRC client. There are still some IRC channels out there for general chat but it is probably most useful now for asking questions about Linux Mint. Most people store their personal emails on their phones nowadays. If you need an app similar to Microsoft Outlook, then you can use Thunderbird. Thunderbird allows you to sync with most of the popular mail providers and as you can see I am linking a Google account to Thunderbird here. Linux Mint provides a nice tool called Web Apps which allows you to run popular web applications as if they are native to the desktop. A good use of this is for Microsoft Office as it isn't possible to run Microsoft Office natively within Linux. Simply give the web app a name, paste in the URL, add an icon if you so wish and your web app is created. You can run the web app from under the web menu within Linux Mint or from the web apps application. As you can see the updates have now finished installing and I am being asked to reboot. I can do this at my leisure. Microsoft Office isn't native to Linux and can only run in a web application. Fortunately, Linux has loads of other Office suites available and Linux Mint has LibreOffice installed. LibreOffice has a fully functional word processor and spreadsheet application which is more than adequate for most people's needs. There is also a presentation tool similar to PowerPoint called Impress and a drawing program similar to Visio called LibreOffice Draw. Linux Mint still provides tools for listening to audio and watching movies stored on your computer. There is an all-in-one application called Celluloid that lets you do both.
Another rather interesting application is Hypnotics which provides TV streaming from various countries around the world. For those people, there's tens of thousands who've been queuing throughout the night and throughout the day to get to this point so they can finally pay their respects to... A more dedicated audio application is Rhythmbox, which allows you to organize your music, create playlists, listen to podcasts and online radio stations. The default set of applications within Linux Mint is generic to most people's requirements. Every person uses their computer for different things and so in order to get the most out of it you will want to install your own applications. To install other applications, use the Software Manager tool. The Software Manager tool has a set of recommended applications, there are then a series of categories such as accessories, fonts, games, graphics, internet, office, programming, science, sound and video, system tools and flat pack. To see a list of all the applications click on the All Applications option. All of your favorite applications will be available. As you can see I am installing Spotify. You can search for applications using the search bar, and as you will see later on, there are options for installing Chrome, Visual Studio Code, Minecraft and an engine to allow Roblox to run under Linux. This version of Linux Mint was run on a mini computer via an SSD, an Intel Celeron N4000 CPU and 4GB of RAM. The performance has been generally very good. This video was edited using KDEN Live and has been responsive throughout the process. If you find Linux Mint is running a little bit slow there are various things you can do to improve the performance such as switching to the Linux Mate desktop. If you think you will like Linux Mint then why not give it a try. If you subscribe to this channel you will find videos showing how to create a Linux Mint USB drive which you can use to test Linux Mint in a live environment which means you won't lose your current setup. Subsequently there are guides showing how to install Linux Mint to a mini PC but the same guide can be used to install to other computers such as laptops and desktops.